Have you ever had someone tell you that you shouldn't use Game Genie because it was harmful to your console? Ah! If you know me, I love the Game Genie. And I was genuinely curious if this was true. So I decided to gather every single model of the Game Genie ever released. And today we're going to take a look at them to see how they interface with each system and see if we can find any apparent reasons that these might be harmful to your retro hardware. The original Game Genie was released for the NES in 1990 created by Codemasters in England, and marketed by Galoob in the US. A total of five Game Genies came out. The NES, Super NES, Genesis, Game Boy, and even the Game Gear all saw their own release of Game Genie, each designed to look as unique as the system it was made for. Quite honestly, these things were a godsend. Game Genie could do things like give you invincibility or infinite lives, and back in the day, games were designed to be so difficult that Game Genie was probably the only way most of us were going to see the end of some of those toughest games. It truly leveled the playing field. So let's take a look at the very first model, the Game Genie for NES. This is the one that started it all. The way this hooks up to your NES is by first sliding a game cartridge onto the female side of the adapter, then sliding the whole thing inside of your Nintendo, pushing it all the way back in there. Then when you turn it on, you enter up to three lines, or three wishes, and hit start to start up your game. It was simple to use, and that was part of the beauty of it. The NES Game Genie is the one you'll hear most people having trouble with, where some people will say that it causes your Nintendo to stop reading cartridges. I actually took my Nintendo apart to see how this interfaces with the console, and unfortunately the way the NES was designed was that when you insert a game into the console, it will put stress on the connector that is responsible for reading your games. The connector is designed to be springy where the pins are supposed to bend a bit when you insert a game into the console, so that it has a good connection. Now what ends up happening is that when Game Genies or Game Cartridges are left in the console for a prolonged period, the pins won't bend back to their original shape. They'll end up taking the shape they're bent in after a while. You'll see here when comparing the PCB to an official game, the board isn't unusually thick or anything. So this is more of a Nintendo design flaw than one introduced by the Game Genie. If you use one of these on your console, make sure to take it out of your system and disconnect the game from the Game Genie when you're done with it. Don't leave it in the console or you're going to permanently bend the pins and have to repair or replace the 72 pin connector. And those third party ones are not as good as the original. I also need to mention that cartridges plug in very tightly to the Game Genie unit, which is pretty much required for them to not get stuck inside of the console when you're pulling them out, like a death grip. Because of this, I assume there's going to be a slightly higher amount of wear and tear happening to the metal pins of the cartridge over time. But personally, I've been using my Game Genie on my games for over 20 years now and haven't had any trouble. The Game Genies for the 16-bit consoles were clearly a step forward. Both were a little bit on the bulky side when inserted into the console, but absolutely worth it for the advantage they provide. The Super Nintendo Game Genie unit here is very large. On the top, you've got the slot where you insert the game that you want to cheat on. And here, you've got this flap, I guess you could call it, which I suppose might help guide your cartridge and keep it steady while it's inside of the console. To be honest, the flap seems kind of unnecessary, but these things are going for a certain look to match the console. And the flap does provide a nice flat surface to put the Game Genie branding front and center. The officially licensed Sega Genesis release of the Game Genie was the one that I considered to be the best looking, as it's a little more reasonable on the size. Compact, sleek, this thing is ready to rock. The Game Genie for Genesis hooks up the same as the Super Nintendo design, where the cartridge plugs into the top and then the stack is inserted into the console. These units were a nice upgrade over the original NES version, where they now allow you to enter up to five lines of codes instead of the three lines of the original. Both of these units also feature a switch on the front of the unit, which allows you to turn on and off the codes during play. But could turning it on and off while the console is on be dangerous to your games? Well, the way the Game Genie works is by patching in values when a specific address in memory is accessed, like altering the part of memory that stores the player's lives. Using this switch to turn the Game Genie off and on while the console is on won't likely damage anything, because the Game Genie will just pass the original values through without modifying anything first. 
However, there is a slight risk of having the Game Genie corrupt your on-cartridge save data. If the code you're using is experimental or causes a malfunction in a way that modifies the game's code that's responsible for saving your progress. Now this isn't all that likely to happen unless you're a Game Genie scientist trying to create your own codes, but you should be aware that this is possible. So what about the cartridge ports? Can they get messed up like the original NES? Well, both Game Genies insert into the console like this, plugging straight down into the port, just like a normal game cartridge does. These updated Game Genies won't put any unusual stress on the port. But again, you probably wouldn't want to leave these units plugged into the console after you're finished playing. So finally, let's take a look at these big guys, the mobile Game Genies. Codemasters put out models for both the Sega Game Gear and the original Game Boy. And these were some clunky units, crafted to match the chunkiness of the OG portables. Again, the Game Genie technology and design had improved over the original NES version, with buttons that allowed you to turn on and off the codes during play, and even a reset button that reboots the console and brings you back to the code entering screen. But the best part of these Game Genies is that they both have a very compact little compartment in the back of them, which houses a little book of cheats for various games. I absolutely love how compact these books are. These books are so awesome for bringing a little Game Genie action on the go. As far as if these portable Game Genies are bad for your console, not in my opinion. They just slide into the cartridge slot like any old cartridge. Sure, it makes these units a little bulkier than they were to begin with, but they don't add much weight. Just makes the portables a little bit more awkward to wield. These things were good quality products that were well designed and well built. And that goes for all of the Game Genie models. They don't have that cheap feeling to them like so many products today. To be honest, I wish they made a more compact version of these. Maybe one for the smaller Game Boy Pocket. These ones were so big they look goofy. Can you imagine walking around like this? So overall, my findings are that these Game Genies aren't anything to worry about. They're not going to destroy your console under any normal circumstances. I would highly advise you not to leave any of these Game Genies in your system for a prolonged period of time, and make sure to remove your game from the Game Genie when you're done with it. But yeah, I would highly recommend picking one of these up. They're still very affordable, for now. It's so cool how they're uniquely designed for each console. How easy would that have been for them to just have one design with the software ported to all the systems? Maybe the cartridge slot changed to fit the console? No way! Codemasters did us a service with these things, and in my opinion, they are so collectible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. And I'm sure you'd love this other video I made about the origins of Game Genie and what ultimately ended up happening to it. Check it out. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Goodbye.